Japan is a nation of rich culture, dramatic natural landscapes, and some of the most amazing wildlife on the planet. During my adventures here, I've had the opportunity to encounter some incredible organisms, which can only be found on the Japanese archipelago. Of all the animals which are found here, one stands out from the rest as a creature that has been steeped in mystery and mythology for millennia. A nocturnal predator that is among the largest of its kind, and also swiftly disappearing from the landscape. To find a giant, we are collaborating with Sustainable Dyson, a local nonprofit organization which is using research, education, and land conservation to ensure a brighter future for these incredible organisms. Richard Pierce, the director of Sustainable Dyson, has agreed to let me join him on a nocturnal survey. Yeah, the first time I saw one was in the daytime, actually. A strange thing happened, and I've witnessed it a few times. I saw it, and then it was in the center of the river, and then it turned, and it came back, and it swam through my legs. And that physical contact, like, locked me in. I was like, right, <laughs> I'll start this, uh, you know, eco tour to really tell people about what's going on with the salamanders and give them a chance to see it and feel as inspired as I was at that moment. Our goal is to try and locate and mark the GPS location of giants, as well as capture a clear photo of their head so that they can be individually identified and potentially subject to biometric sampling at a later date. Okay, right here we have the first animal of the night. Not a salamander, but a cool animal nonetheless. This is the Japanese four-lined rat snake. Wow, this one is actually really, really beautiful as well. This is a species that I featured in other videos before, and this is actually the very first snake species that I found here. But this individual has this really, really cool kind of yellow underside to the chin there, and that is not a phenotype that I have seen yet. Now, of course, they're called four-lined rats because of these four dorsal stripes that run down their body, so that's a really easy way to identify them. And then if you get close enough, you'll notice they also have this facial stripe right behind the eye. I think that looks really, really neat. These act almost like racers do in North America. There are no racers in Japan, but these are very, very active. I've never held one that's behaved like I would imagine rat snakes normally do. So I think that here in Japan, these are kind of like the generalist snakes. You can kind of find them in any habitat. They kind of eat whatever is there, and they're just really, really fast and really alert. As we explore the river by flashlight, every rock begins to look like it could be a giant. In every splash of water, seems that it must be a sign of a nearby salamander. Elevated water levels make traversing the slippery rocks even more precarious, especially as I try to keep my filming equipment dry and ready for action. Okay, so the first spot of the night did not produce any salamanders, probably because it has been raining so much for the past few days that the flow rate of these rivers and streams is greatly increased which is not awesome for us being able to spot salamanders or them moving around. So we've headed to a different location. This one hopefully will have a lower flow rate, so a little bit less water, and it's in a more rural area. And those two things together, hopefully, will help us find a giant. After a few hours of fruitless searching, I was beginning to worry that my dreams of encountering a Hanzaki might turn out to be just that, dreams. And then, out of the shadows, a dark form emerged. This right here is the Japanese giant salamander, the second largest amphibian on planet Earth and the largest amphibian native to Japan. I cannot believe that I am looking at a living Japanese giant salamander right now. I have seen so many photos and videos of this species for so many years. And just seeing them in person though, there is something totally mystical, magical about this experience. And this is also definitely not nearly as big as they get. The largest living Japanese giant salamander today is about five feet long and it weighs over 50 pounds. So this one still has quite a bit of growing to do. <laughs> that, that was it right there. The second largest amphibian on the planet. I don't know if I'll see another one, but oh, that is crazy. The salamander is back in North Carolina are normally the size of my palm, and that thing was probably a solid, I don't know, foot, foot and a half. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find some more. Wow! 
The Japanese giant salamander is a critically important part of the riverine ecosystems here in Japan because they are actually the apex predators. There are no other organisms in these creek systems that get larger than our Japanese giant salamanders, and these things are apex predators with an appetite. Their jaws can open so wide that they actually create a small vacuum chamber in nearby water, which draws in prey items in a hunting strategy known as suction feeding. My first encounter with a Hanzaki was remarkable, but it dove into deep water so quickly that we were unable to capture a clear ID photo of its head. We decided to press on further upstream and try to accomplish our mission. There is a larger individual right down here in this tiny little irrigation channel, actually. Now, this one is probably a solid two, two and a half feet long making it by far the largest salamander I have ever seen in my life. And you'll notice that the whole body of the salamander is dorsally compressed. And the reason the body is dorsally compressed is it lets the salamander kind of wedge itself into these rock crevices. And that's where they'll ambush prey from, and that is where they'll make their din sites. Now, Japanese giant salamanders, as fully aquatic salamanders, have two methods of respiration available to them. They can gulp air at the surface of the water, or they can perform cutaneous respiration, which is gas exchange through their skin. Okay, he's going under the, oh, oh my gosh. So, oh, look at that. That is incredible. Their eyes are so tiny that they are essentially vestigial, providing little more than light sensitivity to amphibians, which hunt almost entirely by touch and scent. In a manner similar to fish, these salamanders have a lateral line of sensory nerves located on their side, allowing them to detect what's going on in the water around them even in total darkness, which is highly convenient for a nocturnal predator. Oh, it's just sitting there. Yeah, is it stuff, trying to get up? No, the stuff drops down. Oh, it's, it's ambush. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, what are you doing right now? So I'm just trying to get a clear uh, shot of its head. So that can be used for IDing it. They have each have very distinct and unique patterns on their head. Now that we had accomplished our goal of capturing an identifying photo, it was time for me to leave the world of giants behind. But the story of the Hanzaki doesn't end here. It always amazes me how such a large creature can be found in a relatively small body of water. Uh, they completely dominate their habitat. But I don't know, I just think they're all round beautiful animals. And I don't know, it just is a very unique experience. I mean, what, unless you go to North America and search for hellbenders or go to China and good luck finding any there. So it's, um, a pretty special wildlife experience and the real problem for the Japanese giant salamander is the actions of the government. The building of dams, the straightening of rivers and then the building of weirs within these straightened rivers to slow down the water once it's been sped up you know. And I kind of felt, feel a responsibility to do something for them because um, they're in a lot of trouble. Thankfully, Richard and the rest of the team at Sustainable Dyson are doing everything they can to ensure a brighter future for these salamanders. And if you want to be a part of their mission, you can check out their website right now at sustainabledyson.org. Together, we can work to ensure that these living legends remain a part of Japan's ecological and cultural landscape for years to come, where they will continue to remind us of the wonder and mystery that is just waiting to be discovered in this amazing world that we call home.